greet you in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, and I welcome you to Sunday morning at Crawford Street. My name is Kevin Bradley, and I am the pastor here at Crawford Street United Methodist Church in Vicksburg. I am glad that you have joined us on this morning, on this third Sunday of Easter, as we worship together. I invite you now to open your hearts and join with me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? God of all blessings, source of all life, giver of all grace, on this holy day, as we gather in your holy presence, as we gather in the place we now find ourselves we pause to give thanks. With open hearts, we give thanks for the beauty of your good creation. We give thanks for the anticipation of new beginnings that this new day brings. 
And most of all, we give thanks for your grace that helps us become the person, the people that you call us to be. Oh God, we want to walk with you. Yet we recognize that right now the road we travel is filled with uncertainty. Yet we take comfort in knowing that you are the God of certainty. So we place our trust, our hope in you. O oh God, on this day, in this very moment, we pause and we remember the names of those in need. We voice our deepest prayer that you will meet each one by name and by need this day. O oh God, we pray for healing, for healing of and in the world. And so we open our hearts as together we now lift our voices and join in that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now on that day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Our appointed gospel for this day is the likely familiar narrative of the road to Emmaus. 
the two travelers are on their way on the Emmaus Road, and it's there that they're joined by a third person. Now, we know that this third person is Jesus, but we're told that they have no idea who it is. And this person whose identity they don't know asks the two travelers, so what are y'all talking about? In, in my retelling of this narrative, Jesus is clearly from the south because of his correct use of the word y'all in asking that question. And so in answer, they say, are you the only one that doesn't know about Jesus of Nazareth and what happened in Jerusalem? And it's then that they tell him. They tell him of the events that have occurred. They tell of Jesus that he was God and that he was handed over and crucified and laid in a tomb. And then they say it's now the third day and some of the women have astounded us. They said that they went to the tomb and he was not there. They saw visions of angels saying he was alive and some others went and found it just as they had said but they did not see him. I love how this part of the narrative is captured in the message. It says it this way, But now our women have completely confused us. Early this morning, they were at the tomb and couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they had seen visions of angels who said he was alive. For me, that captures so well the uncertainty that it seems that they must have been feeling and experiencing. They had recited what had happened, betrayal, crucifixion, death, burial. They knew about these things deep inside. They had experienced them themselves. So they told these things with great certainty. But the resurrection they seemed to tell with a bit of uncertainty. They said it this way, some of the women astounded us with this news. Some of the women completely confused us with this news. It's as if their heads comprehend, but their hearts are a bit different. There seems to be this uncertainty. Is he alive? So the road they were on was an uncertain road. It was a road of uncertainty. And then Jesus reveals himself and all becomes clear. Were not our hearts burning inside us when he revealed it all to us, they say. You know, in in this time in which we find ourselves, I can think of perhaps no better scripture than the one appointed for this Sunday in our gospel reading. The journey down the road to Emmaus. We are all on a journey, on a road, if you will, that is a bit uncertain. When? So many of us question, when will it all be back to normal? How? So many of us wonder, how will it all look? And our favorite question that we love to ask, that we just have to ask as human beings, why? Well, the gospel this morning doesn't help us tackle any of those questions, but I think our gospel reminds us of one very important truth. On a road of uncertainty, we can be certain. We can be certain in whom we trust. We can be certain in whom our hope lies. It is in the God who is ever faithful, whose faithfulness is great. We saw it as Jesus revealed himself to those travelers on the road to Emmaus. And we, you and I, experience it as God is ever present and ever faithful on the road in which we now find ourselves. And so we just keep on moving, trusting, trusting that the risen Christ is with us on our journey, even on a road that at times may seem a bit uncertain. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
So as a people who continue on a journey of faith, do so, confident that Jesus is in our midst and that God is ever faithful. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.